picks of the week. So my pick isn't software. It's actually a a fact and a set of articles and things you can learn about if you're interested that explains how the uh, the the myth of high resolution audio, not lossless, but actually 24 bit, 96 kilohertz, or you know higher than CD quality, higher than DVD quality audio is a myth. You cannot hear the difference. And so when you see these companies like HD Tracks that sell these, uh, you know, high end for audio files, Super Audio CD, um, what's the other thing? And I think uh, uh, a famous musician was supposedly talking with Steve Jobs before he died about the need to put 24 bit audio into iTunes. Yeah. Even the Beatles, when their catalog was remastered, they came out with 24 bit versions. It was 44 1, 24 bit. Now, I knew enough about audio because I, I did take an audio class in college. And at that point, I learned how 24 bit, the only reason to have 24 bit versus 16 bit is noise floor. Um, Oh, I should name the, the website, shouldn't I? Yeah, <laughs> the easiest way to get this is if you just Google the phrase uh, 24 slash 192 music downloads and why they make no sense. It's also at ziph.org, X-I-P-H.org, ZIF. This is from the group of, I think they're just volunteers that are responsible for the uh, the the OG and the Theora Codex, uh, that open source group. So some very smart people there. There is also a video on there that is a primer, sort of an introduction to uh, digital sampling theory, a little video that, that the author of this article made. And it's a great resource. If you're curious about this, they've got links to other things, other studies, well cited, some good diagrams explaining why CD quality is really the best you ever need. So again, with with the with the bit depth, that's just dynamic range. And if you've learned about the uh, the so-called loudness wars, if you've ever looked at a waveform of a CD, you know that CDs really only have about three decibels for pop music of, or for rock or anything made nowadays, about three decibels of headroom. So having, you know, it, it, the, the exponentially greater depth of, of uh, dynamic range, quietness uh, before you hit that noise floor down at the bottom for CDs or for regular pop music is irrelevant. Um, and then also the 192 sampling rate Turns out 44.1 is all you need because the Nyquist sampling theory shows us the theory of sampling rates is that in order to produce a frequency like, say, 20 kilohertz, the highest range humans can hear, you need only double that to, to reproduce that. So 44.1, 48 kilohertz, those are fine. Uh, interestingly, on the analog to digital conversion, the original capture of the sound, that's when it makes sense to oversample because then you avoid the distortion that comes when higher frequencies sort of alias themselves down into the audible frequencies. And they show that because of this, end user delivery, like a, like a, a download, like a FLAC download or, or, a, or a lossless CD purchase uh, that, that is a super high sampling rate, you are putting in all this inaudible frequencies that go way beyond the, the range of human hearing in consumer grade audio gear that actually causes distortion in the inaudible frequencies that becomes audible in the audible frequencies. Oh, so having super, super high sampling rates is not actually an audiophile benefit to the sound. It actually harms the sound quality. That's very interesting. That's very, yeah, very she, interesting. Uh, what's the website again? What? What's the website again? Uh, it's ziff.org. And the way to get to the, the article is to Google just uh, 2492 music downloads and why they make no sense. And let me see. The other way to get to that was... Uh, 2492 music downloads are very silly indeed is the alternate title to get to that article.